Hello and welcome back to the Cognitive Whiteboard. My name is Luke and today this is the third video we're filming around fascist modelling. And I was planning on talking more about methodologies at this point, but there was so much interest in how I blend multiple vertical curves together into a coherent three-dimensional trend model that I thought I would show you exactly how I do that. Um, so let's get started. What we want to do is have a conceptual depositional model in mind. So this is something you've built up um, from your field data and analogous nearby data sets so that you understand how the fasces uh, might be brought together in, in the overall system of that formation. Uh, and we'll take a look at the wells that we've acquired and see where they cluster inside um, that depositional model. Because what we're going to do is say that these clusters of data give us some observed information but it's an incomplete set. We need it to represent that depositional suite uh, in a more robust fashion. So we're going to cluster our wells together. In this case, I've got uh, three particular uh, groups that I've used that represent my depositional model. And I'm also concerned that there might be another set of fasces that hasn't been sampled by my wells. So when I start with my, my data, I've upscaled the, the, uh, the fasces logs three different times uh, for different groups of wells. And now I'm going to build some vertical proportion curves. And I'm going to use some detective work to understand how to take this observed set that has a terrible sample rate to construct something that represents that depositional region of the model. Uh, we're going to do that for each one of the scenarios that we want to carry, including the one that we haven't sampled, that we're going to really base this entirely upon uh, depositional concepts. And, uh, and we're going to build vertical curves four times over and these will exist there in every IJ column of your grid will have these percentages of these particular fascist types. Now, obviously this is tremendously uncertain at this stage. So it's well worth considering does this need to be um, analyzed uh, in multiple, uh, multiple times so that you're representing your uncertainty appropriately. But let's say for now, um, these are the trends that we want to do. So essentially we've picked up the vertical trends out of our depositional model linked to the wells, but that's really where it's coming from. So that we come down and say, how are we going to distribute this geological behavior uh, onto that grid? What I do then is I construct some simple two-dimensional maps. They overlay the reservoir. So I can now map out where vertical curve one will exist where two, where three, and where four should be on a map-based sense. Uh, this is simply a surface that goes literally from value one to value four, and I've sculpted that uh, myself using geological intuition. So for example, I wanna say, what if this carbonate fascis exists? Uh, perhaps it could be in this corner of the map uh, or the other corner, or perhaps along the entire edge. And I wanna see, does this change um, the, the answer for the particular business decision that I am facing next? And I can simply blend together these four properties that are, you, that are uh, the same everywhere in three-dimensional space into a model that has different vertical curves in every point in space by using this equation here. Uh, so you have to increment that for each one of the trends that you're doing. Uh, and obviously you could combine one and four if you wanted to think about um, how you could do that mathematics. Um, you could obviously change the numbers around a little bit. But in doing so, you can blend these curves together so that if you're 30% of the way between one and two on this map, the vertical curve that you'll get will have 70% uh, of this fascist assemblage and 30% of that fascist assemblage with those same vertical patterns. And in doing so, you can really take control of the way your fascist models uh, appear. And I find this a fantastic way to generate very different geological scenarios and test what's gonna change uh, my next business decision. I hope this is helpful and I'd love to hear some critique on the method. So please feedback in the comments and let me know what you think.